former Karachi cop's acquittal in the murder of aspiring model Nagibullah Masood has triggered widespread criticism across Pakistan on the state's failed prosecution. Nagibullah was among four men killed in 2018 by senior superintendent of police Rao Anwar and his team in what they claimed was an encounter with Tariqa Taliban Pakistan terrorists. Nakibullah's family disputed Rawanwar's claim, saying that the 27-year-old had no links with any militant organization. The murder sparked countrywide protests by civil society and Pashtun community against the state's failure to arrest the influential cop known for fake encounters. Well, what we call fake encounters in Pakistan are essentially custodial deaths at the hands of police and law enforcement and sometimes even army personnel. Uh, the problem is quite widespread in Balochistan province, in other parts of Pakistan, in Khaybur Pakhtunkhwa and Punjab. But in Karachi, which is the biggest city of Pakistan, we have seen in the 90s and sometimes even before that, uh, an official policy uh, where the police are given a free hand to go after criminals, militants uh, and uh, shoot them at sight. Uh, and pretend that this was a gun battle in which uh, the police has managed to neutralize uh, some of these uh, heavily armed uh, criminals. Uh, we saw this in the 90s and Rao Anwar is seen as a product of that unofficial policy. Uh, he, he takes pride in, uh, in taking part uh, in those operations. He says that he was serving the national security interest of Pakistan. He believes he's done nothing wrong. He thinks he's a hero. Uh, and he, in fact, he should be appreciated for risking his life and uh, leading uh, so many police officials who essentially had a free reign in going after people. The only problem with this is uh, uh, it violates fundamental principles of human rights uh, because there is no due process, you're not arresting people, there is no trial. So you are deciding based on whatever in, uh, intelligence you have that uh, this person uh, is a criminal and the way to take care of them is to maybe detain them, torture them uh, and, them, and then shoot them in, in cold blood. Uh, so scores of people, hundreds of people belonging to political parties, religious groups have been killed in that manner and uh, Rao Anwar is, uh, you know, is accused of being one of those main figures who carried out uh, this policy. Rao Anwar had a notorious reputation for his unconventional ways of policing. Uh, he takes pride in being part of so many gun battles where uh, scores, possibly hundreds uh, of people were killed whom he says were militants or criminals. Um, this couldn't have gone on for years, even decades, uh, had he not been uh, part of uh, a national security system where, we ha where he had political uh, cover as well as uh, backing from our military and intelligence uh, services. Uh, the conventional wisdom in Karachi, and you talk to senior analysts and people who have seen these uh, things closely, is that he was somebody uh, who who, were, who worked very closely with uh, intelligence agencies. Whenever they arrested, detained uh, militants from up north in the northwest, uh, those militants were brought to Karachi and given to him. Uh, and allegedly, uh, he and his, uh, his teammates uh, would take care of these people. And that's why you found uh, you know, bodies, uh, unclaimed bodies in various parts of Karachi and in the suburbs of Karachi. Uh, in 2013, in 2014, uh, and uh, the, the, the political leadership in the province of Sindh, uh, the ruling party, uh, the head of the ruling party, Pakistan People's Party, um, the president, former president Zardari, uh, defended uh, officials like uh, Rao, saying that uh, he is actually a brave officer and he risked his life to uh, go after militants in the 90s. So he's somebody. Uh, who's appreciated by the political leadership and by the intelligence agencies uh, because he's been loyal and he has carried out uh, operations at their behest. Then Chief Justice Mia Saqib Nisar had taken Sumura notice of the murder and twice offered Rao Anwar to surrender.
After eluding law enforcement for some three months, he was finally arrested after surrendering before the top court in March 2018. The former cop was moved to a house in Karachi's Malid Cantonment, later declared a sub-jail. Meanwhile, the high-profile trial faced inordinate delays. Finally, five years later, on 23rd January 2023, an anti-terrorism court judge extended benefit of doubt to the accused and acquitted Rao Anwar and his subordinates in the case. Uh, the judgment, as unfortunate as it is, is less surprising, primarily because uh, this was in the works uh, since quite a few years. The trial itself lasted five years, that uh, the prosecution deliberately put up a weak case, allowing witnesses to resile, contradict themselves, uh, not questioning how important documentary evidence has gone missing, uh, deliberately uh, calling in and examining witness which were contradicting each other. And uh, we as lawyers uh, representing the legal heirs of Nakibullah, time and again uh, objected to such measures. However, unfortunately, uh, as uh, archaic as our criminal procedure code is, it only allows a very limited role to a private uh, lawyer engaged by a complainant or the legal heirs of a disease in the matter, as was the case in this. And it is primarily the prosecution's job to lead the case. And uh, these measures being taken and uh, especially uh, other pressures uh, acting outside the court on the prosecution witnesses uh, and some incentives as well, we saw that those witnesses who were police officers who resiled from their statements or contradicted their earlier statements rather than facing disciplinary inquiry were uh, given um, hand-picked posts uh, which they preferred within the police department. Uh, we also saw that uh, senior police officials within the province who were initially heading the inquiry and the investigation against Rao Anwar and under whose supervision the joint investigation team prepared that uh, damning report which had all the evidence against him, uh, all the senior officers one by one were transferred outside uh, of the province uh, whether their uh, deportation or their transfers were due or whether some political pressures were at play. But the coincidence is that none of the senior officers are present in the Sindh police force anymore. Um, and further, uh, uh, one is aware or at least I can say for myself that uh, political pressures, whether be it in the form of support from the incumbent government of the province at the Pakistan People's Party, whose chairman and the former president of Pakistan Asif Ali Zadari is on record on having celebrated Rao Anwar and his killings uh, or be it a um, uh, real estate tycoon in the form of Malik Riaz uh, who carries a lot of sway and influence in Pakistan uh, for whose uh, 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 real estate uh, uh, schemes and housing societies uh, Rao Anwar was very instrumental in uh, grabbing a lot of land um, uh, while serving as SSP Malir where primarily his real estate uh, housing society exists, or be it our security agencies who uh, engaged Rao Anwar to do their dirty work as people from all over Pakistan were abducted, went missing, and then um, mysteriously found dead in encounters in Malir one after another. Even in the instant case, uh, all four uh, deceased, be it Nakibullah Mahsood or Isaac and Sabir, who belonged to Southern Punjab or Nazrajan, none of them had any. Uh, record of uh, past convictions or criminal cases against them and uh, whereas Nakib was only missing for three days before he was found dead uh, Ishaq and Sabeh who were also relatives to each other uh, were missing since two years before they were found dead in Malir uh, so definitely uh, Rao Anwar was an asset to many in Pakistan and uh, would accordingly be having many secrets maybe that's why from day one, the state went easy on him. He was never made to spend a single day in jail, even though his bail uh, was granted much later uh, for his comfort and luxury and peace of mind. His house, his personal house was converted into a sub jail. So from day one, uh, things were in motion to make arrangements for his eventual acquittal. Regardless of the fact that we call ourselves a democracy and we have a constitution, we in effect are carrying forward traditions of our colonial past be it our laws, rules or procedure, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the police, our political structure, governance structure, uh, our land holding structure, 
the system is geared to serve the elite the system is geared to serve those in power whereas the public are at large are ruled or governed in a way that they should be kept in order so be it the case of nazim jokio where the queues were uh, influential rich landholders tribal chiefs elected members of parliament provincial and national assembly or be it the case of nakibullah masood where the queues was a senior ranking official police officer or be it the case of the family butchered on the main highway in saiwal by security agencies where the intel given um, was by uh, isi uh, or be it ca- cases of say land grabbing uh and uh, uh, other kinds of crimes uh, where real estate tycoons are involved um it appears that suo moto actions uh, media campaigns hue and cry by civil society can cause some problems but in the end uh, it's them who have the last laugh because they know that the system is geared to serve them eventually according to human rights commission of pakistan data in the year 2021 11 people were killed in police encounters in balochistan 109 in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, 294 in Punjab, and an astonishing 1,645 people were gunned down in Sindh. 